So right now, the world leaders and scientists are gathered in Dubai to discuss the solutions that will help us solve our climate crisis. And members of NOAA have a seat at that table. That's right. NOAA Administrator Dr. Rick Spinrad joins us now. Dr. Spinrad, thanks so much for taking some time out of your busy schedule to talk to us. You're part of the U.S. delegation at COP. So why is it so important for NOAA to be part of these discussions? Yeah, thank you for the opportunity to talk. So uh, Dubai, the COP28, uh, as we call it, is a critical international meeting for defining the way forward to deal with uh, climate change, both to mitigate against it and then to adapt to its solutions. And at, at NOAA, uh, we view ourselves as that uh, leading government source of authoritative climate data, climate services information. And so a lot of the policies that are going to be discussed at COP are based on understanding how climate change is going to affect uh, the planet. And so we are there to provide the best scientific basis for making decisions and directing policies. We appreciate that you guys are there. And, you know, this is the second year that NOAA is a co-sponsor of the Ocean Pavilion. So if we look at a year where we saw record-breaking ocean temperatures, can you talk to us a little bit about what are some of the issues as well as maybe solutions that we're going to be highlighted or that are highlighted at the pavilion? Yeah, that's a really good point. And as you said, we saw record breaking, breaking heat in the globe in general and in the ocean specifically. You may remember last summer there were discussions about hot tub temperatures in the waters off mm -hmm. uh, Florida. And in fact, what we know is that these kind of temperatures have very dramatic impacts on coral reefs, on ecosystems. And it's not just the temperature, but the oceans are getting more acidic as a result of more carbon being deposited in the ocean. So understanding the roles, uh, understanding how climate affects the oceans is very much an important part of the discussions about how to deal with climate. And then understanding the role that the oceans can play in mitigating against climate change is important too. So a lot of discussion in the governments around the world about can we look to the oceans as ways of drawing down carbon dioxide from uh, the atmosphere and mitigating some of the impacts of climate change? So just Good. before COP, the Biden-Harris administration announced the creation of a new national system to measure and monitor greenhouse gas emissions. How is that program going to work? That's a really important announcement. I'm glad you brought attention to that, Felicia, because uh, we have obviously at NOAA and in our partner agencies at NASA and EPA and others, for years been developing technologies for measuring uh, greenhouse gases. And we think about this both from the bottom up, that is, can we count the number of uh, sources of uh, methane and other greenhouse gases and then add it up to figure out how much is going into the atmosphere? And can we do a top-down approach using things like satellite and observing towers and measure the amount of meth methane and make those two numbers match? So it's important because greenhouse gases obviously are key to understanding climate change and our ability to make policy decisions about limiting greenhouse gases or minimizing them depends on our ability to both measure them and monitor how they change over time. So a number of specific things were identified in that policy, including a greenhouse gas monitoring network. We will play a critical role there. Uh, we have tools we call carbon tracker, for example, a way of not just measuring where is, where are the greenhouse gases now, but where are they going in the future? So the ability to measure, monitor, and predict greenhouse gases is central to the new framework that was announced last week. Doctor, we only have about 40 seconds left, but I know one of the events you're spearheading is a discussion about advanced early warning systems. Can you kind of break down specific fields that you think that'll be implemented? Yeah, so the best way to think about early warning systems is in terms of the particular perils or risks. So those are typically floods, fires, mm -hmm. drought, sea level rise. And so we are developing a broad array of tools that will allow us to provide warnings around when we might see more wildfires, for example. And this is important globally. It's not just a U.S. specific issue. And it also boils down to what kind of warning times are critical for each particular emergency manager. Yeah, that, that is such great work you guys are doing. No Administrator, Dr. Rick Spinrad, thanks so much for talking to us today. Can't wait to see Thank you. Uh, what comes from all of that. Me too.